Nearly 1,100 families once lived where Dodger Stadium now lies. The predominantly Mexican and Mexican American families first moved to Palo Verde, La Loma, and Bishop, which we now call Chavez Ravine, during the 1910s. They moved there because restrictive covenants prevented Mexicans from living elsewhere in the city. By the 1940s, they had built a vibrant community of schools and churches and nail salons and grocery stores and regularly held parades and fiestas. But in the 1950s, the Los Angeles Housing Authority sent all the residents a letter. This letter told them that their houses were going to be torn down for the construction of a public housing project. The city had decided that their beloved neighborhood was a slum. And so they used eminent domain against the residents that said that the city could take ownership of private property if it was for public use, and in this case, for a public housing project. Within a year or two, most of the families had left and moved to other parts of the city. But a couple years later, the city of Los Angeles changed its mind, and they entered into a deal instead with the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Brooklyn Dodgers would be able to come and build a beautiful modern concrete stadium on top of this beloved neighborhood and communities. At the time, there were still about two dozen families still in Chavez Ravine. And in 1959, the Los Angeles Sheriff deputies arrived to the home of the Arechigas. Television crews were present, so were other residents and family members. And what ended up happening was a two hour long struggle that resulted in women literally being carried from their home by police officers. This was an incredibly painful episode for the Arechigas, their descendants, and for residents of Chavez Ravine that they still remember to this day. But there are still three things to remember in addition about this community. The first is that they are truly a Mexican American community. One resident, Alfred Zapeta, likes to say that he lived in three cultures. He, li he lived in the Mexican culture that his parents brought from Mexico and they spoke Spanish in the home. He lived in the Mexican-American Chicano culture with his friends when he hung out in the neighborhood and they would speak English and Spanish and listen to rhythm and blues and rock and roll. And he lived in American culture when they would venture into other parts of the city. The second thing to remember is that these residents resisted. When they received those letters from the housing authority, they hired lawyers, they staged protests, and the women from the neighborhood even held a sit-in at the mayor's office. To this day, they continue to share their story so that future generations will never experience what they did because they feel like it was such an injustice that should never happen to anyone else again. And the third thing to remember is that they persevered. They moved to other parts of the city, they became part of city politics, some became lawyers, and they moved on with the commitment to Los Angeles and that they belong to it. For the past 40 years, they reunite every July at the same place in their beloved neighborhood right outside Dodger Stadium. And they do this because their homes and their community is st still buried beneath it. For the last 40 years, they have shown us what a true community looks like, one in which they persevere, but never forget where they came from, even if that place is no longer physically visible.